Welcome to London Begin Hill Airport at the wonderful Bombardier Service Centre. And in a world that sustainability becomes part of our everyday life, and we all have to do our bit for the environment, we thought there's nothing better to talk about than electric aircraft and the future of aviation. Charles, what is electric aviation? Electric aviation, in broad terms, has the potential to transform, as you said, the sustainability of aviation, but it is quite a long march. In the big breakthrough, really, is something called distributed electric propulsion, which has created a way for people to design aircraft where even somewhat limited battery power can be put to good effect for relatively small, relatively short-range aircraft that people are calling eVTOLs. But beyond that, Electric propulsion technology could include various hybrid solutions that would increase the range of the aircraft. And ultimately, my personal belief is that the future is to use hydrogen, in some cases to produce electricity, in some cases to directly combust, to really extend the range of what would be quite clean aircraft. So that's the excitement. That's the hope. And Adam, what do you think about electric aviation? Is it the future? We are at such an exciting time in aviation. Billions of dollars have poured into this sector and now we have over 500 different projects building these electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Yes, but is electric aviation truly sustainable? Of course, with any using electricity, it all depends on where you're generating it from. If you're generating your electricity from a coal power station, mm -hmm. then it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. But here we are at Bombardier, and very soon they're going to have solar panels on the roof here, charging not just this building, but the airport itself and the aircraft that are visiting. So that will be very sustainable. I think there's no question it's sustainable. I think the, probably the more point, poignant question is it economically viable? Can it be made to pay its own way? Can it really be impactful on the way aviation goes? And I say yes in the longer term, but it is going to be a series of steps. So let's talk about the short term first. Yes. In terms of getting the first aircraft certified, we're probably two years away. Okay. Uh, and that will be a huge step. It will probably happen. Companies like Joby in the United States, companies like Lilium and Vertical Aerospace here in Europe are potentially a couple of years away. But I don't know how do you see it, Adam. It's interesting, George, because this is a question that anybody in electric aviation gets asked all the time. When you tell friends that you're now working with electric aircraft, the first thing they say is, electric aircraft, is that really a thing? Mm -hmm. But actually, these aircraft are flying. We have Pipistrel Electro. This is the first certified aircraft in Europe, in the world. And next year at the Paris Olympics, Volocopter are going to be flying. They're hoping and they're very determined to cross over commercial certification by then. And they've even invited President Macron to become the very first European commercial passenger. What's so important is that, yes, they'll be connecting airports like Charles de Gaulle and Le Bourget, but they're also planning to build a vertiport right on the Seine, pr pretty much on a barge, as I understand it, next to the Gare d'Austerlitz in the centre of the city. And that will give, really, city dwellers the, their very first personal experience of what these things could look like. Very and small scale, but Adam, significant. Actually, you had a personal experience. Yes, I've day. flown in an electric what aircraft. Like? Absolutely incredible. I flew not far from here at Dames Hall, with a fantastic gentleman called Deepak. And you can go flying uh, on electric aircraft today. Get in touch with Deepak. So my experience was incredible. The Pipistrel Electro is essentially a very light aircraft, like a microlight, which is powered by an, a motor and, a, and the energy sources, the battery. And it's that simplicity which really impressed me. I fly, personally, uh, a Cessna 210. When I'm flying that aircraft, I'm constantly juggling how much the RPM should be, how much mixture, the fuel to air ratio, the temperatures of all of the six different cylinders. It's a full-time job managing a complex single-engine aircraft. Now, step inside to an electric aircraft, 
there are three switches that you have to operate before flying. It's fantastic and it's quiet, much quieter. There's no smell of burning, which might upset some of the old petrol heads amongst us, but it's a very clean environment. I think the other great connection we should perhaps make, and I think it's long overdue, is the connection between electric aviation and what we call business aviation. Here we are at Biggin Hill in London, a primary business aviation gateway. And business aviation has this image of being somewhat exclusive and really just for quite a small group of people. If these Evitol aircraft go into service and scale up, and that's the big if, then you know potentially this could open up a version of business aviation to far more people than have any realistic prospect of that today. Adam mentioned helicopters. Very true. Potentially these aircraft could operate in places that helicopters are just shut out of indefinitely because of noise. It's our hope that EV tolls will be much more accepted by town planners, by the populations themselves. Firstly, the noise levels. They're going to be whisper quiet. In fact, for the passenger experience on board, the windows are going to be huge. It's going to be like floating as opposed to flying. It will be a very different experience. It will become addictive to fly on an EV toll. You'll want to do it again. It will be like a Disney ride. You'll get off and it will be so magical that you'll want to go back into the queue. And so you're right, Charles. We hope the cost of operations will be significantly lower. Honestly, the autonomous side of this, the higher degree of automation is almost more exciting than the electric propulsion because from a flying point of view, from a scalability point of view, one of the big questions with Evitols is where on earth are we going to find the pilots to fly these things? That's a, a very good point, Charles, and that's where I'd like to ask here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about these thousands of new machines suddenly started flying in two or three years' time. Who is going to fly them? What licensed people will need to fly those machines? You're going to have to have a commercial pilot's license. Now that could be either a helicopter license or a fixed wing license. And then you will add in your EV toll rating, your powered lift rating to that license. The problem with You're that, though, Adam, is the cost. Oh, yes. Uh, on another podcast, we're talking about the lack of pilots in the industry and the problem that the industry is facing as it is. Now, you add all these thousands of machines flying around, where are we going to get these pilots? Look, aviation is safe for a reason. We are heavily regulated, and that's a good thing. It keeps the, the industry safe and keeps our passengers safe. Now, all of the regulators are being so supportive of these new technologies coming through. I've flown in a number of the simulators, and it takes less than five minutes for anybody, regardless if you're a pilot or not, to get absolute understanding of the controls. They're normally just two joysticks. One takes you up and down, and the other just you point it and you'll fly, and then you can rotate it and the aircraft will rotate. And that's it. We are all aiming towards the 2050, a big yeah. number of net zero for aviation. Absolutely. Which, do you think this is achievable? Personally, I think it has to be achievable. I think it is achievable, but it will require not only very aggressive implementation of technology, but frankly, a societal willingness to be more open-minded about how we use aviation. When you explain to friends that you're working in electric aircraft, the first response is, is that really a thing? And the very second question they ask is, how far do these things fly? Now, most of the manufacturers are saying around about 100 kilometers is now what we should expect with four passengers on board. So how accessible would this industry be? In terms of price, it's going to be expensive to begin with because these, ex these aircraft are expensive and anyone buying them would want a return on that investment. And to begin with, the pilots are going to be, have to be very qualified. But over time, the cost will come down significantly. Accessibility has another meaning too. It, it, there are people who feel excluded from air transport. If you're in a wheelchair, there, there are enough stories of very bad experiences that people have had. 
try getting somebody into a wheelchair, into a helicopter, for example. There's an opportunity to press the reset here, and some of these companies are taking that. There's a company in France called Voltero, delivering, developing a hybrid electric aircraft called the Casio. And from day one, because this was put to them as a problem, they're designing a door that's going to be large enough and with the architecture that will allow people in wheelchairs to board the aircraft with dignity and convenience. Fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Your pleasure. Welcome. If anyone wants to contact you. Well, I'm on LinkedIn, Adam Twidle. Please get in touch. And you'll usually find me at AINonline.com or futureflight.aero. Fantastic. Thank you.